we've just seen this Prima Power Genius uh, punch in action. Now it's moving at an incredibly high speed. How important is that in the process or the whole punching process? On this particular machine, uh, really important. There, there are a number of different um, aspects to look at for a customer's point of view. Speed is one of them for productivity and efficiency. If they've got a lot of volume to, uh, to get through, we need a really, really quick, very accurate machine, which is what we have on this Punch Genius machine. Now, before we go on to talk about this machine, I think it's important to tell our viewers that it's not just the punching process that you can undertake here. You do provide combination machines as well, uh, shearing machines, laser cutters, so you can do one process uh, operations completely parts in one hit of course yeah I mean this is the punch genius machine so this is punching and as you can see from the sheet it can do a lot of other things as well uh, but we can also combine that punching technology to have punching and shearing and we can put a laser on as well and have a punch laser combi so that gives the customer a massive amount of flexibility in terms of what they can produce from the one machine now I know we're going to be putting some uh, footage over the top of our interview to just show how fast this machine is and in fact what we're making here um, on this uh, on this sheet now let's let's start actually let's start with this turret because I tell you what, I look at that and I think to myself, gee whiz, I've never seen one with that many tools. Is this unique? Uh, for us, it's um, uh, one of the things where the technology has really evolved over the years. We've got two options on this machine. We've got a 16 station turret or a 20 station. The 16 station actually is the one where every one of the index positions can be indexable. So the actual tool unit can be indexed within its own position, which means that we can uh, fill it full of multi-tools. We can index them round to a required position for the form uh, and required orientation at quite a high rate, as you've seen. Um, and that would mean with a 16 station turret we can get up to 384 tools in there using multi-tools. The 20 station one, 10 of them are indexable, 10 of them are static, uh, which means that we can get up to 280 tools in that unit. But what we've also got on this machine is the intelligent RAM, and the intelligent RAM basically moves around around the top of the tools to effectively create an, almost like an indexable uh, tool in some of the static stations, as well as making the tool change on the indexable tools a lot faster. I mean, is there a need for that many tools? It sounds great, but do you supply these machines into areas and industries where they will get the benefit or utilise uh, that capacity? We will do. It depends on the customer's application. And as we've said before, we're very customer-centric in making sure the customer gets exactly what they need for their production. Uh, what you've got to bear in mind with the flexibility from the tour is that once you've got the tools in there, you set them up in such a way that you can do a lot of different jobs through the machines. So the way that we'll set the tour up is basically around the customer's production requirements. If they've got a lot of different parts, a lot of different forms and requirements, then yes, you could get a lot of tooling in there and you'll have different stations configured and set up for different jobs that will go through the machine. Uh, a, a figure that we spoke about earlier, we're talking about a thousand hits per minute on the punch and I know it varies on the materials and, and the application but it just goes to show how fast this machine is and part of that speed comes as a result of moving the sheet to the turret doesn't it as opposed to the turret to the sheet why is that your option of of maneuver that's just basically to do with the throughput i mean the way that we've got it now is that we can actually move the sheet around underneath the turret you get a very very fast accurate position where of course the turret itself is totally stable in that o-frame design uh, that's not moving we're not carrying a huge amount of weight with the tooling because we're just basically rotating it and we're moving the lighter part of the process i.e the sheet around underneath the turret and now what we're doing on here this is what fascinates me as well because in my day of being in the machine shop, a, uh, a punching machine was just for that. It was just for punching. But that's not the case now, is it? You can do a lot more with these machines, as we're demonstrating. Absolutely. I mean, you can see on here, we've managed to create some louvers. These are just sample parts, but again, customised around the, the customer's actual point of view, what they're wanting to do with it. And uh, the tooling uh, obviously then goes with that. But what you'll see on these sample parts here, we've created some louvers, some ventilation. Uh, we've created some up forms. We've stamped logos in. We can also engrave logos. Uh, we've tapped holes in there as well. We can put countersinks in, uh, little tags for cable ties, just about anything that the customer wants to do on there. So it's a lot more than just punching. I wonder how many, um, how many you know, fabrication shops out there realise that you can do all this with one machine. Uh, to be honest, I mean, the customers that will, will uh, look at one of these to start with will have one set of requirements quite often. Uh, we'll finish up with them suddenly realising they can do a whole lot more on the machine that they hadn't thought of to start with. That opens up whole new ideas for them and development in terms of their own product portfolio, but also their production and, and how they go about making the products that they make. Now, tell me about accessibility here as well, because we, we're obviously standing right next to the machine. It does seem it's, it's, it's very easy to work with. It's very ergonomic. But tell me a little bit about, you know, the whole hardware around here and whether this table actually moves backwards and forwards, how does it all work? 
Okay, so what you've got on here is you've actually got your clamping axis there. You can say that you see the clamps, uh, and incidentally, they will actually move as well. If they're in the wrong place on the sheet, they can reposition uh, during the process. Um, what we've actually got is this table will slide back. So if you're loading a shorter piece, a, a narrower piece, you don't have to have the table out at the full extent. You can load in, and you can see here there's a handle to move the, uh, the table backwards and forwards so that for an operator, he's not having to lean right away into the clamps to, in order to load the part. He puts the part on into the fingers, the fingers clamp up and the process starts. What about the finished part, the ejection? Where's the, that going? The ejection it depends on really the size of the configured parts. We have ejection uh, parts slots in the table, so a trap door will drop and allow some parts to drop out. Obviously, bigger components can stay within the skeleton, and we can leave tags in, micro tags in there if the part needs to be shaken out and we don't want it to spring out of the uh, sheet during processing. There's an oily finish on here. Is that all part of the uh, method of, of getting the best punch? Yeah, I mean, tool lubrication is very important. We have tool lubrication on this machine. We can also lubricate the sheet if we need to. Uh, but the, on this machine here, we've actually got tool lubrication on there. So it is just leaving a very slight oil on the tool as it goes through the material, just basically to get the best punch form. Uh, no, no danger in trying to go for speed compromising power with this machine still got plenty of grunt it's got a lot of grunt yeah we're talking 300 kilonewtons on this one so that's an awful lot of power uh, and again that's around the customers we've got different uh, different options this machine's got what we call the dynamic package on it so it's the faster overall speed and the, and the biggest power from the uh, the punch power point of view but again depending on the customer's requirements we might not need all of that in which case we can tailor it around what the customer wants a pretty futuristic business as well i believe all of your equipment industry four ready Absolutely, yeah, they've all got Industry 4.0 built into the controls, it's just then a matter of equipping them with the right software to take advantage of the data they're recording, and we do all of the software as well, and we can interface to other proprietary systems, SAP, ERP systems like that. And we can't forget to say again, as we open this, whether it just be this style of machine or a combination with a laser, you guys certainly are an attractive uh, proposition to, or, or an attractive company to talk to. Uh, the Punch Genius, this is the 1530, bigger, smaller? variants in size? Uh, we've got a slightly larger one in terms of the length so we can go up to four meters and we've also got a slightly smaller one 1225 which is obviously 1.25 by 2.5 uh, again depending on what the customer's requirements are. The other thing to note with all of our machines is that automation is always possible on them and we do a very very wide range of automation systems whether it be to automate the machine itself or to actually put in a full complete system of multiple machines either connected together in a single line or actually connected onto a a big storage system, a system we call the night train, uh, which actually picks the materials from large cassette units and brings it to the machine, the machine processes them and then uh, ejects the finished pieces out from the other end. And as we can see here, machines here in Coventry ready to be seen, uh, the machines alongside the touch screen control so engineers can get in contact with you to come and have a look. Thank you very much, uh, Barry. Very good insight. No problem, thank you.